camera. Hello, people. Good to see you guys. So we're going to wrap up our week with the wonderful Jonathan Ray. We haven't had him on for a while. Jonathan is one of our senior engineers and has been for many years and occasionally pops on streams to talk about really cool stuff. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, real quick, if you'd like to support the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. We have our FM Training Annual Subscription Bundles. There are three options. One has FileMakers. If you're like, man, I don't actually, if you happen to be a completely new to FileMaker and you have just stumbled onto this video or a stream, hi, welcome. You just, if you pick up this version, you'll get FileMaker here with the training bundle for $3.99 as well as all of our video courses. These are both different, these have different amounts of videos. I think this one includes certification and this one has calendar kit and coaching, some other stuff in it. Uh, they're really short and bite-sized. Every once in a while, like I'll get like a message in my chat that goes like, you guys are rambling. And that's kind of, we're live. It's kind of what happens. You're listening to me ramble right now. Uh, <laughs> but basically, since we're live, we take questions, we talk, we converse normally. This all gets edited out somewhat in extent in our post videos for all of these, but not entirely. Uh, so if you're like, I really need bite-sized, straight-to-the-point content, this is where you'll get it, and it pretty much covers everything you need to know about becoming a basic FileMaker developer. Okay, pick up those. If you have already, thank you very much. Seriously, it supports the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Would you like me to chat at chat for a little bit, Jonathan? Are you good? I am as good as I think I'm going to be, and we'll maybe have to do a little bit of live development, and that'll be fine. Okay, so what we have going on, I have a um, a copy of FM Starting Point, and um, this demo is mostly ready. It's like 95% ready, so we'll do the extra 5% uh, live here. Uh, but what we have, I've removed some uh, stuff that doesn't pertain to this demo. So what you're seeing here is a copy of our, our flagship product, FM Starting Point. And I've removed a lot of the modules just from the home screen, just so you can see what we're demoing today. And we're going to be in invoices and products. Okay, so the the basic idea here is that there are times when, let's say, for, uh, for instance, in an invoice, I have a brand new invoice here, right? And I, um, let's say I uh, have it for a certain uh, account. Let's see, we'll just put this one here. And the idea is if you want to add items, line items, one by one, this is what you can do already with FM starting point. You can come here to invoices or same thing applies to estimates. And you come here in line items and you perform a search on the various uh, products that you have and you select a couple of them or one of them, right? And you hit add selected products and it adds it there. That's great. Right. But um, what happens really is if you want to, you know, if you want to keep doing that, um, you're, ha you're having to search and add and search and add. And previous versions of FM Starting Point, previous to this one, um, there wasn't even the ability to add multiples. Right. So you would have to come here to add line item. You'd have a popover, if you remember the old look, and you would do a find. And you would search and you would click it and then it would add the item. Then you'd come back in and do another search and add the item and so forth. And it was this, it's slow if you already know what kind of items that you want to add. So in some systems, they're uh, pretty complicated where they might have a hundred line items. We've had customers that, that have these types of things where uh, it's a specific type of invoice or maybe it's an orders uh, database and you're adding a whole bunch of items and you already know what those items are. It's like a like a bundle of, of line items that you're adding and you want some way to be able to quickly add an invoice without having to hit add line a hundred times or search for uh, in this search box. I'm then searching for the hundred items that I want and I have to scroll through the list or I search and it just takes a long time, right? So there are a couple ways to um, to do this, to allow you to rapidly enter data. And this applies um, in a couple scenarios. So it's not just an invoice and products thing. You can take this concept really and and use it in your tool belt uh, for, for your database. There's a, a lot of applications for it 
the basic idea is that you have a parent record and you want a bunch of uh, predefined child records added to it in bulk without having to manually search for each one and add and manually search and add and continue the process. So there's two techniques, the first of which is ready to go, and I'll, I'll show you that. And then the second, um, it's mostly ready and we'll have to uh, do the, the final bit at the end here. So the first technique is super, super simple. Okay, this is one that most everyone will be able to implement into their solution. And that is the ability to add from a template. Okay, so if I click this button here, this file will be available um, later. I'll, I'll give it to Margaret and she'll put it in the show notes. But you can see here, if I hit add from template, a little popover comes up. And then I'm able to select from some predefined templates. And I say, I want to add all products that have that are included in this template or this bundle. Then I hit create and then it adds them. So for instance, if I hit gold package, right? And I hit create. Then I have to drag this over. 11 were successfully added to this invoice. Boom. Okay. So you have a rapid data entry there where I didn't have to manually do this. It's one and done. And if I want to add on top of that, I can add you know some other package or bundle and create. And another six were added. So it's like kind of like a, you know, in a blink of an eye, our invoice is ready to go and we can send it off. Again, this doesn't just apply to invoices, but the technique, I think you can see what I'm saying. Okay, so here's here's how this first technique works. I'm gonna pull up a new window, window new, and go to products. And again, this is super, super simple. Okay, we have like 50 different test products uh, entered here with with some images and things, just all of these are, are fake, right? So, so some of it is just <laughs> nonsensical too. But what we have here is a new field down at the bottom and I've labeled this templates. So if I go into layout mode, command L or control L on Windows, you have this checkbox list here and it is a new field I've added called templates, okay? And in it is a checkbox setup where the values are just hand entered values, okay? Hard coded values. And I hit edit keep having to drag everything over to this other screen. Uh, and you can just edit the values there. Um, call these bundles or packages or templates or whatever you want to call them. What you can do in products is I can assign a particular product, one or more or none of these templates. Okay, so this uh, iPhone X here, is included in one, two, three different templates or bundles. And other ones are included in other ones, right? And I've just kind of randomly selected a bunch for you to see that, okay? So you have 50 records, 50 test records here, and most of them are gonna belong to at least one template. So for all of them, I put uh, each one of them is at least gonna belong to the all items template. So for some crazy reason, you wanted an invoice that included every product that you have, right? You could add, you could come here to all items and it would add all 50 line items in a split second. Now, would you ever want to do that? No, right? But this is just a, a proof of concept thing. What you probably would want to do at some point is if you're offering special packages, special discount you know, items that are all going to be bundled together. It's more than one item. Sometimes companies do a bill of materials. Um, they call them BOMs, B-O-M. And uh, it's kind of like a uh, line items within products, like the, the mini products that make up one product. If you're sending, say, a, a flashlight, you know, you have a flashlight product. In that product is a bundle of the, the flashlight itself, and then batteries, right? So you have two products, and this is real basic, right? But you have to figure out how exactly am I gonna structure this in my database? Many people put all of the different components in products. So you'll have a flashlight as one record and batteries as one record, but you need some way to kind of group them 
right? And be able to add both of these things on the line items if you're adding them at that level. Or maybe you have a um, a separate list here in products called Bill of Materials, uh, and it lists then everything that makes up this parent product. So hopefully I'm not getting into the weeds. I'm just giving you some ideas of how this could be useful and implemented into a system. Okay. So the idea in this case is that you have products and you have um, different templates that a product could belong to, could belong to none of them, could belong to all of them. And then in invoices, when I come here to add product, I select one that I want and then I hit create. And all FileMaker is doing is it's finding any record in products that matches the one I've selected here. Okay, uh, and then it goes ahead and creates line items for all of those uh, matching products. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what we're going to do from add to template. We're going to debug this first technique here. You know, how does this button actually work? So the way I do it, instead of going to uh, scripts and searching for the scripts, this is a little bit of a shortcut. You can come up here to script debugger. Okay, pulls up this thing. Let's make it smaller. Then you click the button that you want to debug, okay? And then you click the, the first step into button, and then you click the edit script, and then it will pull up uh, that script in a separate window, okay? And that's how, it's a, a quick little way to, to get to it. Okay, so let me um, just walk you through how this works. And then the second technique is much more involved. This one might just be, enough for what you're going for if you need to add uh, records in bulk. Okay, so here's the, the first technique here. You can see that all of these script steps are color coded and things, and that's due to the monkey bread pl uh, plugin. So first, we make sure that there's actually something uh, that's selected in our template first, right? This is the, the uh, G underscore bulk add template. G stands for global right, global underscore bulk add template. Okay, so if we're not in browse mode, if get window mode does not equal zero, so if we're not in browse mode or there's nothing in this field, then stop right there. Halt script means just stop everything. Okay, so if we're in find mode and a user came in and clicked on this popover and hit create, we don't want it doing something crazy, right? It would it mess everything up. So we just want to what I we want to do what I call a sanity check, right? We want to make sure that the person's in browse mode and there's something selected. Okay. If there's something selected, then we capture the ID invoice, which is this thing right here. So INV00224 is the one that we're wanting to add line items to. Okay. Then here we're going to capture all the matching products that match the template that we just selected. Okay. We do this through the list function. And so we're getting a list of everything from this relationship here. I'll show you what this is. So um, it's T12R. So if I pull that up, T12R. Okay. And it's right here. So here's T12. Uh, T12R is right there. So if I double click, this is products. So we're getting all the products. And then how are we actually finding these? We're finding them through anything that uh, we just selected, right? So let's say it's like the gold package or something. We selected that. Any product that includes gold package in that templates uh, checkbox will be a match. So you can have several different selections in this templates uh, checkbox set, and and that's fine. You can have, you say say you have twenty different items that are selected. Um, even if you even if you do, it's still going to work. So I have gold gold package here, and all the products that match that selection um, are going to appear in my list. So in FileMaker, what we can do in our script, we can get a list of matching records here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So in the data viewer, we come here to, so we can go list, 
And then what are we getting a list of? We're getting a list of uh, T12, whoop, T12R, and we are getting a list of T12R, and then we want all the ID products, okay? Getting all the matching IDs. Evaluate, boom. So we get a bunch of them. And this one, I don't even know what that is. I think that's a bad import or something. Um, but these are all the right um, uh, product IDs. That's what you should be seeing there, okay? Okay, and then uh, in our list, let's see, silver package, yeah. Okay, and so if there's nothing there, if I have selected a template, but no products belong to that template, then it's going to say, hey, you can't do this. There's nothing that belongs to it. Halt. Okay. Otherwise, we've passed all the checks. Otherwise, we know that the user has selected something and that the user is in browse mode and that there is something that actually matches the selection. Okay. So great. What we do from there is FileMaker closes that popover, saves any changes to the invoice. Then we're going over to the invoice line items, right? So this portal in the background is the invoice line items. And we're going to go to a layout that belongs to it so that we can start creating all the records we need. We're going to do a loop. And what loop means is that we're going to, well, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new record for every single matching ID product. So let's say we have six records that belong to the silver package that we just selected. And we have six product records that match that. What we want to do then is go through the loop six times. So we want to create one, two, three, four, five, six line items at the end of the script, one for every product that we just found. Okay, And this is how we do it. We, uh, we first, we get a count of the matching ID products. Okay, so we know how many loops we have to go through. That's important. If you don't know how many loops you have to go through, then you're probably not gonna, um, it's, it's not a good thing. You have to do a check, an exit loop if, like uh, stop looping if, and in this case, iteration, that's, that's the word I use. It's um, some people just abbreviate it to I, right? But that's what it stands for is iteration. We're counting the number of times we're going through this loop. So at the end of it, the iteration should be six, and then the count should be six if we have six matching records, all right? So um, for every single time that we go through the loop, then we up the count by one. So we start out with zero because we haven't gone through the loop yet. When we go through it, then iteration equals one. The next time it'll be iteration plus one. So one plus one is two. The next time it'll be iteration plus one. So two plus one is three and so forth. So it ups it every time. And each time that we do, it's just simply doing uh, two set fields. It creates a new record. And then it says for, for this record that we're creating in line items, we're tying it to the invoice and we're tying it to the next product uh, in the list. So if we have six products, it's saying, okay, um, if it's the first time through, get the first one. If it's the second time through, get the second one and so forth. All right. So this might this whole looping process might be very, very familiar uh, to people who've watched this uh, live stream. But for others, loops might be a little scary. Uh, but this is this is how you do it. And if you dig into the comments here, that should explain it a little bit more. Okay. So when we're done, this should be six equals or uh, iteration, right? So it would be six is greater than or equal to count, which would be six, then it exits. We commit the changes to the line items. Then it goes back to an invoice screen that doesn't have any script trigger attached to it. And then this perform script is really important. What it does is it updates all the totals down here at the bottom right, and then saves the changes. Then it goes back to our original invoice layout, and then it gives you a little congratulations, uh, show custom dialogue. Hey, they've all been added. Okay. And and then that's it. So this, in, in terms of complexity, believe it or not, th this is a relatively simple process. Okay. What we're going to talk about next is, um, is a, a level above that, to be sure. But again, 
Um, this is something that if a FileMaker uh, power user uh, ha has a database that they manage, maybe it's something that they created themselves, you'll be able to create this on your own. And you can you can do this. It's a matter of setting up one extra field in products, in, in this scenario, a field called templates, and then you have a global field in here, and then you have a, a script like this, and then you have your bulk creation process. So so pretty easy on, on that standpoint, okay? Okay, so the next thing here, let's create a, uh, a new blank record, okay? And we'll just say, we'll tie it to this uh, test account. So here's, here's the next one. And this one is more involved than this, um, this add in bulk. Okay, so there are times that you already know the exact um, records that you want added in bulk to something. There are other times where you don't know, but you want to be able to have a mechanism that allows you to add things quickly. Um, and this is this is kind of what I've come up with. Okay, so I'm calling this like a shopping cart uh, method. Here's the idea: if I hit add bulk, okay, what we want to do is on the left-hand side, this is our, our search criteria, okay? So what we're doing, I want to find all products, right, that are the type product, not service, and I wanna add everything that is also electronics, so it's a product, it's electronics, it's active, and let's say it's uh, manufactured by Apple, okay? And I want to, um, the, the default quantity for all of these line items will be one, okay? So what I've done here is I've done some rapid filter criteria for find criteria. I said, I wanna find everything that equals this, 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 and add, right? And it will add the, uh, the corresponding, um, the, the, the corresponding products that it finds. So there might be, none that uh, that equal that yeah so here now you see that we have six that that match that criteria and the idea is that i can now change this and i say okay now i want uh, everything that matches this category and i want to make sure that it is a catalog item and that it's active and for this one i'm going to make it a quantity of three for everyone that it finds Right, and it didn't find anything there, so you should add a um, a custom dialog. Um, but that's the that's the whole idea, okay? Where you can keep adding to your list. Let's see if we do something else here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's a little bit buggy right now because the first the first five of these should be one, and the the next ones that it found should be three. Uh, but it's replacing them right now. Let's see if we do laptops. Yeah, okay. So you can see what's going on. What I'm doing is I'm curating or compiling like a shopping cart list of everything that I want to add. And it's not added yet. In the background, in the line items, there's nothing there. Uh, until I hit save and close, will that happen? The idea is that you have find criteria on the left, and you're doing rapid searches. What I've done here is just giving you some ideas where it's just type, category, manufacturer, status. And then, um, so this is the find, and then I'm adding my own customization to it at the end. You could, you could maybe add a custom price there if you wanted to. Um, you could add date ranges on the left. Like you could have fields that would say something like created between such and such date and such and such date or purchased on such and such date to such and such date. So you could do date ranges. You could do a bunch of things. And so you can let your imagination kind of go there on how you would do the find criteria. But essentially, you have, you're have you defining here, here are all the products, anything that matches this on the left add it and then maybe we'll we'll customize it or override it like instead of just giving the default quantity of one i'll put in two or something right and it just keeps adding and adding and adding 
this remove button will remove one of the items. So let's say that it gave you a couple that you didn't want. It added 50 at one time and you wanted 48 of them. So then you go through and you pick out the ones that you don't want and it should remove them from the list. And I don't, I'm not sure if this is working yet. So let's see, <laughs> let's give it a test. It's what I was working on right beforehand. Yeah, I think it did. Or maybe it added it. <laughs> so some uh, something is still buggy there. Um, the idea, though, is that I can come through and I can uh, clip off the ones I don't want. So I have a perfectly, until I have a perfectly curated list, then I hit save and close. This card style window closes, and then all of the line items are added. That's the That's the idea. So here's how this whole thing works. When I hit cancel, it's going to clear out my shopping cart, basically. All of these things, of course, because it's FileMaker, all these things are customizable. You don't have to do it this way, but this is a, a proof of concept thing. Okay, so cancel. So here's what I'm doing first. Um, if I hit script debugger, let's pull that over here and walk through it. So add bulk. And I come here. Okay, and so first of all, what it does, it's going to wipe out all of the values that I just had. So all of these global fields, anything that you see with G underscore uh, indicates that it's a global field. And so all of these we're going to reset before we open the window. Okay. And then um, what we're using is a virtual list. And I think that's that's probably something that's going to scare people that are kind of at the power user level or the you know mid mid level uh, type folks. And so that's why I started off with a, a simple demo. This is not simple. Okay, so you'll have to you'll have to tear into this file to figure some of this out. So this is using a virtual list. I'll show you how that works, but it's setting the the shopping cart to to nothing so far. Everything on the right uh, of that card style window is based on this global variable. If the global variable is nothing, then nothing's going to show. Okay, so we. Uh, we wipe out those default values, boom, 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 okay? And then we set the uh, the invoice ID that we're on uh, to a global variable, because at the very end, when we hit save and close, it will take all of the, uh, the products that we have on our shopping cart and then add them to this invoice. Well, we need to tell it what invoice we're talking about, okay? So we commit the record, and then this new window is using a card style. Okay, if you're not familiar with a, a card style, what it does is you can uh, you can dim the background uh, parent window, and a card style will not let you do anything if it's 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 restrictive. Okay, so you can tell it I don't want to even allow them to close the window. Um, if you click in the background, it's not going to let you. You have to um, you're forced to do whatever the user interface is, is giving you the options to do. So if you don't put a cancel or a close button on the window, you're kind of stuck. So you, you have to go through the steps of this user interface, okay? So it's a card style window, and this doesn't matter here, this adjust window, resize to fit. Um, on other windows it would, but card style window doesn't. And then this refresh portal right here uh, sometimes you need to refresh the portal in order to get things to show up. Okay, so it refreshes it and exits the script. Now we have a totally reset shopping cart. Okay, so on the left-hand side are all of our fields. All of these are global fields. And just to, as a quick reminder, a global field, if you keep hearing that term, you don't know what that is. A global field is a field that is going to have uh, one one value for all the records in in a table. Okay, so say you have a million records in invoices. The global field, if I put a value in there, it'll have the same value for every record that you navigate to. Okay, it's just, it's like a selection um, type of field. And not only that, let's say both Margaret and I are both in the same database. It's hosted on the server somewhere. And I type in a value in a global field. Margaret's not going to see that. 
And if Margaret types in a, um, a value into that same field on the same record, I'm not going to see it. It's specific to just me, right? And so global fields are very helpful. It means that um, you could have 100 different users using this bulk add feature, entering the same fields, the same global fields, and having different values, right? So you can you can be adding a bunch of records with multiple users at once. Okay, so um, in in the in the type, uh, let's I'm going to cancel out of here and show you the uh, the actual window that this is related to. So new window, layout mode, and here's the new screen here. Okay, uh, so here's our screen, and I'll go through the different elements on it. So number one, so all of these again are G underscore fields, global fields. Uh, this one is pulling all of the product types. So in products, you have um, product or service, right? You could have more types than that, but uh, it's pulling all of those values. Then it's pulling everything in the categories. So here are the categories. It's pulling all of those. Manufacture, it's pulling um, all values, uh, all unique values of manufacture here. And it's doing that through a value list. So it's saying, uh, give us, in this case, all products, all products with the same, uh, uh, all, all values from products, manufacturers include all values. Okay. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Okay, this one is a status. So it could be in products, you can have out of stock or active or discontinued. And that's helpful in, in your filtering. So you don't want to add things to an invoice that are out of stock or discontinued or something. So these are good options. Um, and then here's catalog item available, et cetera. Uh, again, these are just ideas. But in products here, you could, you could add any of these. Okay. You could add, um, you could add something like um, price where you're doing... Uh, you're doing a find on anything that has a price that's under $100, uh, anything that's over $100. So you can do uh, is greater than, is less than type of finds. These are just basic. Okay. Again, you can do date ranges, all that type of thing. I'm just giving you some ideas. Okay. And then here, um, down down lower, it might be might not be as obvious. The This whole section is not a find criteria thing. This is a data entry thing, okay? So here's what I mean. Like when I add a invoice line item, let's say I add whatever this is, okay? I just added something, but now I'm going to come over here and let's say I change the quantity to two, then things change. Or I change the price to 50, then it changes, right? It updates. So what we're doing here is we're going to find everything that matches this, and then we're going to do some override data entry if we don't want the default values. Okay, so if I add six uh, different products as line items here, and I don't want the quantity to be one, um, and I want it to be two for all of them, I could override it there. Or if I want the price not to be the default price from products, but let's say for some reason, I wanted all the products that I find to be like $20 each. So you know, some of these scenarios are kind of weird, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do, right? Okay, so the add selected button, and I know we don't have a ton of time, so um, I'll go through how this works. So add selected, let's come here. I'll probably need to find a couple things first. Let's see invoices, add bulk. Okay, so let's find all products with um, uh, jewelry, active, and then uh, one, that's fine. Okay, so here's how the add selected actually works. Add selected. We'll just step through this here. Okay, so um, I told you this is gonna be a little bit, a uh, little bit more advanced, but uh, we'll, we'll try. Okay, so, we, we, first, we first make sure that 
the user has actually entered some fine criteria here. So if the user has not entered a type and category and status at the very least, then it's going to stop them dead in their tracks and say, hey, you have to enter um, the required values before you continue. And it halts, stops right there. Uh, because we have added that stuff, it skips over that. And then we capture all of our filters. We capture the type and the category and the manufacturer, all of the stuff that they could possibly enter, we capture as variables that we're going to use later on. Okay, so we get all of our stuff. Then it freezes the window. This is important uh, in order for the user not to see like screen flashing back and forth when you go from layout to layout. So freeze, then it goes to the products. We're going to go do a find based on the stuff that we just entered. So we've got a products, and then we're entering find mode. And you can see here, we're doing our find based on whatever the user put in. So we're doing a find. Uh, the type is going to be product, and the category, the manufacturer is blank, so that would be blank. The status, both of these are blank right now, so that wouldn't matter. And then let's see if we found something. Perform find. We found four records. Okay. So then we have an error check. We say if get last error does not equal zero, meaning that an error did occur, then we're going to set a little flag say, and we'll come back to that. Otherwise, and this is where we're at, it didn't equal, um, uh, there, there wasn't an error found. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an array, a list of these products, uh, and it's from a calculation field. Okay, and let's pull up the data viewer and show you this. Boom. Okay. Products array. This is what this looks like. See that? That confusing bunch of text. But here's, here's what it means. Each of these things that are separated by a pipe symbol represent a distinct uh, piece of information. So here's the, the type, the category, the date it was entered, the status, um, the actual name of the thing, uh, the ID, uh, and the price, right? So here's all this stuff. Uh, the reason why this is important, this product, product array, we're going to use this in this variable here, okay? So we set that, and then this type full array, uh, what this is doing is it's grabbing this variable, and then it's appending... Uh, to the right of it, the quantity that the user may have put in. So if you recall, when we first started the script, we put in a quantity of one. So it's giving us all the stuff in this array, plus another pipe symbol and the actual quantity we put in there. Okay. Then let's go on. Okay. Now, uh, up into this point, nothing is going to display on that, on that portal on the right-hand side. Nothing until we populate this global variable called virtual list products. Once we populate it, boom, you can see down here, where is it? Uh, virtual list products here. Okay, that's the array. That's gonna drive our shopping cart. Okay, this is, this is our shopping cart in the background, All right? Now we come back to the original layout, which is our card style window. And then this uh, G max field, that's, um, that's how virtual lists work. It, it shows you how many things are on the list. Okay. And now we have our four records that we just set. Okay. We save changes and we refresh the portal. It's already refreshed, but sometimes that's helpful. And then it says, uh, if you run into an error, then show custom dialog. We didn't. And then it exits. Boom. Right. Uh, so that, that's the idea of how the virtual list works. Um, I don't think we want to get into the nitty gritty of like what a virtual list is and what in the world we're talking about. Um, <laughs> if, if that term is unfamiliar to you, you never heard like, what is a virtual list? What are you talking about? Uh, it would be good for you to uh, go back on our archives and do a search on virtual lists. And I think I did. I think I did one a while back, and others may sure have. You did. I'm yeah, and that will give it. you an idea of how this is useful. This is a good case in point where this is useful. Okay, uh, so I don't want to keep repeating myself on the overview on how this works, but.
but that's the that's the idea on how you add a selected add your selection okay uh, from here um, all it is with this save and close and I'll have to work on that script just for a couple minutes right after this um, live stream uh, to get this working but basically it's going to take everything from our um, our global variable that we have set this where is it uh, virtual list I'm looking for it here it is, okay? It's gonna take everything from here and it's gonna find the um, the product IDs for all of them. It'll loop through and create line items for each one of those with the appropriate quantities. And then it refreshes. So in some ways it's similar to that first technique that we showed you at the beginning of the, uh, at the beginning of the hour, right? That it's, you're, you're grabbing a list of products and then adding that list to your invoices. In this case, it's a little bit different where we're, we're just adding to that list, right? So we're finding this and then this and then this, and you could have, you know, a thousand um, products in your shopping cart that you've carefully curated. You're, you've removed the ones that you don't want. And then when you're done and you're satisfied with it, you hit save and close, and then it, it will, um, and then it will create your line items. That's the idea. I can't really demo that right now because it's about five minutes away from <laughs> from being done. But in the uh, in the in the file that you get in the show notes, um, it'll be it'll be working and it'll be good. So let me stop there and quit talking and see if we have any questions on that. If uh, something wasn't clear at all. Yes, we've got two questions. I'm going to take sure. David's first. If you want to create a product that contains two items, iPhone plus charger, would you create a template or a bundle category? Yeah, so in the in the way that I'm using the word uh, template, it could still it could apply to uh, bundles too. So let's come here. It's kind of the same it's kind of the same thing. Okay, so you have um, you have templates. And I, I, I guess I guess I understand the question where he's saying if you have two two different components that make up a product, right? How exactly would you go about adding um, that to an invoice? I think I heard that right. In that case, you you would probably have another portal somewhere here that would be something like components. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so. In products, here's the way I would set it up at least. In products, I would have um, I would have some sort of flag like parent product or um, bundle or something. Like this is the the total package, like maybe a flag package. And then you'd have a separate um, a separate list that's a, a self-join. It's products to products. You're you're adding related products to it that make up that package okay so the package might be a hundred dollars okay but the components you're not actually um pricing out like you may put the cost in there but you're not let, let's say a a package has 20 items that make it up all the little bits and components and stuff you, probably you're not going to want to show that on an invoice, all those things. You know, it'd be, that'd be strange. Like if you're buying a, a box of Legos for your kids, you're not going to list all 99 pieces, but somewhere, right. If you're the manufacturer of this thing, you need to know that there are 99 pieces and these are those 99 pieces. <laughs> okay. So it's a, um, it's the component list that you're compiling but on your invoice, all you're doing is looking at, say, packages or whatever the parent product is and not the child products. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Maybe I can offer some clarification if, if that doesn't. Hopefully. Let me know if you've got a follow-up question for that, David. Uh, yeah, no, David says it makes sense. Uh, Scott has another question. This point until the end, when adding a product to the template with the checkbox, how does that work? shown early in the presentation i'm i'm not quite sure if i if i understand but let me let me try to go over it um so if i'm in products right and i have mm -hmm. here's these 50 records and then this 
uh, checkbox set, mm -hmm. right? Um, you you add whatever packages or templates that this product belongs to, and then in invoices, right? This is where it would be added from this popover, right? So I'm now selecting from that value list. It's the same value list, right? All of this stuff is going to apply or show up on this popover. So I'm choosing one of them, right? And then FileMaker is going through and essentially saying, okay, you chose gold, gold package. Now let's come into products and find everything that is gold package. And here's 11 items. And then FileMaker collects those 11 items and then adds them for each of the, uh, for, for the invoice that you're on. Uh, I think that's the best way I can explain it uh, at the overview level, but I might not be understanding the question. Because Scott's, uh, Scott's initial follow-up is what happens when he clicks the checkbox. Oh, templates are fixed or could be added. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. That that makes a lot of sense. So here, what what we're doing here in templates is templates is not its own like table. Now you could make it its own table. You could make it its own um, list of stuff. Right now, all it is is um, right. It's a field that's living in products, and the value list is just straight up hard coded hard-coded entries, okay? You could, uh, if you want to uh, make it more complex and, and more helpful to you, you could have a whole table called templates, right? And you could name those templates, and then maybe you could even have an active, inactive um, flag on it, and then this field would only show the active templates that you could choose from. You could do all sorts of things with it, but right now, it's just a, a regular old hand-entered value list. Um, it's as easy as it comes. So if you wanted to edit the value list, you're just clicking the edit um, uh, button here and then doing changes to that value list there. Yeah, and hopefully uh, this, this sample file will uh, clarify some things. Uh, if you're like me, Things don't quite make sense until you're hands-on and you're digging in. You're like, ah, okay, I get what in the world you're saying now. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully that will uh, that will help, and uh, you can just let us know if you have any uh, other questions in the in the comments of like the uh, the YouTube channel and and stuff like that. But I'm uh, my my hope is that this is a a tool that you can put in your tool belt and make something that was really laborious and time-consuming very easy where you can bulk add things uh, when needed. Yeah, no, thank you, Jonathan. Good presentation. I second Lynn in Austin. So. All uh, right, cool. Thank you very much. Very cool. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. There we go. up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 